Joining us now is Rick Tyler, national spokesman for the Cruise Campaign. Rick, welcome. Good morning to Good morning, you. Martha. Good to have you here today. Um, to here. Let's take a look at some of the exit polls from South Carolina. And, and the first sure. one deals with how he did with evangelicals. This was obviously pointed out uh, quite a bit on Saturday because uh, Senator Cruz has staked a lot on the evangelical vote, which he lost 34 percent to 26 percent to Donald Trump. What do you say about that? Well, I think we, we could. Uh, Donald Trump has appealed to evangelicals, and he's convinced them that he would defend them. And, and I certainly understand that because evangelicals are often uh, uh, ridiculed and mocked uh, in movies and the media. And so I understand that. But I would appeal to the evangelicals to say, if you if you really want someone who's, who has had a proactive record on the life issue, on the marriage issue, uh, on the Planned Parenthood issue, uh, it is Ted Cruz, and uh, we'll continue to we'll continue to communicate that to them. Yeah, and the articles this morning and over the weekend with titles like Why Cruz is South Carolina's Biggest Loser, um, because he was really expected to do well there. It was a state that should suit his strengths in a very good way. So, I mean, how do you recalibrate after South Carolina? Well, look, South Carolina, the coast of South Carolina down in Charleston is actually a very liberal community. Uh, Marco Rubio won that, or did very well there. He also did very well in the capital city, which is which is quite liberal. So there are these pockets of liberalism in South Carolina. A lot of people have moved into, you know, South Carolina's beautiful state. You no, know, it's why they would move there. But you know, Oklahoma's not really like that, and Tennessee's not like that, and Alabama's not really like that, and and Texas is not like that. And so all those states are going to go March first. We spent a time in those states uh, while we were being criticized for not being in Iowa we were in those states but we won Iowa and a lot of those states look a lot like Iowa all right you are in a strong position at least in the real clear uh, politics average right now up by 6.7 in Ted Cruz's home state of Texas and you just mentioned Oklahoma you mentioned Tennessee do you feel like you're going to win those three states I think you mentioned a fourth as well are you going to win well, all part of our strategy is to do well on March 1 because most of the delegates are that's the biggest single day uh, for delegates and after that day 45 percent of the delegates would have been chosen so we feel part of our competitive edge is that we finish January with more cash on hand than all of our competitors combined I should point out Donald Trump could continue to write his own checks but we have that money be specifically saved to compete in March 1 we also have tens of thousands of volunteers all throughout the March 1 state. I know that in Georgia we have 10,000. I know in Tennessee we have over 7,000. In Oklahoma we have over 7,000. In Texas, uh, Ted Cruz's home state, we have over 27,000. So we've got the organization. We've got a candidate with a message. He is now the only conservative left in the race with a path to victory. So we're feeling pretty good about March 1. All right. So Georgia, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, you know, would you declare right now that you expect to win in Texas? I'm not no. I'm not going to predict in this race, Martha. I'm not going to predict anything. But uh, we hope to do well there. Absolutely. All right. You know, obviously, over the past 10 days, um, Ted Cruz got hit sort of from both sides with the liar label. Uh, Marco Rubio was laying that on him quite a bit, as was uh, Donald Trump, and it seems to have stuck and hurt him a bit um, in South Carolina. And then you've got this issue this morning, which I know you've already apologized for. We're not going to replay it, um, but where there, there was a video that Marco Rubio stopped and said to you know one of the Ted Cruz supporters, um, you know, all the answers are in there, pointing to a Bible, and somebody had said no answers are in there on this video and you retweeted it or put it out on a Facebook page. Uh, do you have to be more careful about that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The Daily Pennsylvanian <clears throat> put up that video and they put the captions of what they said was the transcript on that video. I just checked it five minutes ago. The Daily Pennsylvanian is sticking uh, by their transcript. But look, I know it to be wrong. The reason I know it to be wrong is because I know the staffer that Marco Rubio made the, the remark to, and it was a lighthearted remark. You know, Marco, in, in his candid moments, is is uh, is a very funny guy. He likes to he likes to you know uh, tease, and he's uh, uh, so he went over and and he was pointing out that he was reading the Bible, and he said, look. There are a lot of answers in there. That's what he said. He said there are a lot of answers in there, and the, and the transcript says the opposite. So I know it not to be true. I've asked the Bailey, Pennsylvania, to, to correct it and take it down, uh, but they haven't done that. So look, I mean, it I, seems I on the face of it that that video and the fact that he would say that would be kind of preposterous in the first place, wouldn't it? I mean, what candidate absolute, in South absolute, Carolina? Yes. So why didn't that sort of hit you as kind of odd and probably not exactly the way yes. it went down when you when you saw it? You're, I mean. You're absolutely right. It was. It was. Uh, I posted it in haste. I should not have done it. Uh, I've apologized to Marco Rubio. I apologized to the campaign, and uh, I posted that on my Facebook and also shared it on Twitter. And I'm saying it here. It was a mistake, and I would. N I would not 
knowingly post something I knew to be false. But you're right, the judgment about what he said uh, was wrong, and uh, so I apologize about that. Oh, we got a lot of, you know, there's a lot of heat uh, in these moments for everybody. A lot is at yeah. stake. Yeah. And uh, Rick, we thank you for for being with us today. Thanks, Martha. All these topics. Appreciate Good it. Good to see you again. Thanks, Rick.